Hi, this is Eric White. In this screencast, I'm going to discuss an algorithm for retrieving the text of a bookmark in OpenXML Word Processing ML. One of the issues that makes it just a little bit interesting to retrieve the text of a bookmark is that the bookmark start and end elements can occur at different levels of hierarchy in the XML tree. Let me show you what I mean. Here is probably the simplest configuration for a bookmark. The bookmark starts in the middle of a paragraph and it ends in the middle of the same paragraph. Obviously the text consists of the text of this run between the bookmark start and bookmark end element. But equally valid is this situation where the bookmark start element is a child of the body element and a sibling to the paragraph element and the bookmark end element is a child of the paragraph element and a sibling to a run element. In this particular case the text of the bookmark would consist of the entire text of the first paragraph followed by a new line followed by the text of the first run. We can also find this situation where the bookmark start element is at the level of runs and the bookmark end element is a child of the body element and a sibling to the paragraphs. In this situation, the text inside the bookmark would consist of the text of the first paragraph followed by an environment.newline followed by the entire text of the second paragraph followed by the environment.newline. In effect, this end paragraph mark here and here, if these end paragraph marks are within the bookmark, then there should be an environment.newline or a new line at that particular place in the bookmark. This situation where bookmark start elements and bookmark end elements can be on varying levels of hierarchy in the XML make it a little bit tricky to retrieve just the runs between the bookmark start and bookmark end and exactly when you need to have an environment.newline in the middle of the text. We don't really have any XML axes methods that will return just the elements that we want. If we are starting at the bookmark start element and we ask for elements after self, then we're going to only retrieve the run that follows that bookmark start element. We could then go up a level and you know start munging around in the tree looking for the bookmark end element and trying to come up with some algorithm where we can exactly figure out whether we need to put an environment.newline in the text and whatnot. The algorithm turns into a little bit of a mess. This situation highlights the issue even further. Here there's a bookmark start that's in the middle of the first paragraph and then the entire second paragraph is contained in the bookmark and then just the first run of the third paragraph is contained in the bookmark. Well there's a little trick that we can do to make processing this markup a lot easier so that we can figure out exactly what the text of a bookmark is. What we can do is we can transform the word processing ML into an invalid form of word processing ML just for the purposes of making it easier to retrieve the text of the bookmark. We of course never want to write this invalid form of word processing ML out to the document again, that would be bad, but we can do this just for the purposes of retrieving the text of a bookmark. So what I call this is, this is flattening the paragraphs, that what we do is we take all of the runs and move them up so that they are siblings of the paragraph, and then take the paragraph along with the paragraph properties, if any, and put that element after all the runs and in that element we take away all of its children runs. The only purpose of the 
paragraph element here is to signify where the paragraph mark is. Let me show you another example. Let's look at the situation where the bookmark start element is a sibling to the paragraphs and a child of the body element and the bookmark end element is a sibling to the runs and a child of the paragraph. Let's flatten this and look at the markup. And this is what the markup looks like after it's been flattened. Here we can see the bookmark start element is a child of the body. All of these runs are also a child of the body. And the bookmark end is a child of the body. And, and at the bottom down here, the paragraph element that signifies basically the paragraph glyph is also a child of the body. You can see here how we can find the bookmark start element and find the bookmark end element and then simply grab all of the runs between these two elements and that comprises the text and if we see this paragraph element that signifies a glyph then we transform that paragraph element into an environment.newline. Let's look at the situation where the bookmark start was in the middle of the first paragraph and the bookmark end is in the middle of the third paragraph. Let's see what that markup looks like after we flatten the paragraphs. And here's what that looks like. Here we can see the first run that is not within the bookmark. Then we can see the bookmark start. Then we can see the run in the first paragraph that's within the bookmark, the paragraph glyph the run that's in the second paragraph and the paragraph glyph for the second paragraph and the run that's in the third paragraph and the bookmark end element. One last point. Let's take a look and see what happens to paragraph properties if we have any. Here's the example where there is a bookmark that starts in the middle of the first paragraph and ends in the middle of the third paragraph. Let's go to that bookmark we can see that's where it starts and that's where it ends. Okay, now let's add some formatting to this middle paragraph. We'll just indent it. That should be sufficient. Let's save the document. Let's open it in Visual Studio. Here we can see that the middle paragraph now has some paragraph properties indicating that the paragraph is indented. Let's flatten this markup and take a look at what it looks like after we've flattened it. And here's what it looks like. We can see the runs in the first paragraph and the runs have a bookmark start between them. We can see the run in the second paragraph. Then we can see the paragraph glyph and we can see the paragraph properties within that paragraph mark. And of course this paragraph element doesn't have any child elements other than the paragraph properties. Then we can see the run of the third paragraph and the bookmark end element. It isn't particularly important when retrieving the text to preserve these paragraph properties in the paragraph element. However, in the next screencast, I'm going to discuss how you can replace the text of a bookmark and in that situation it is going to be important that we preserve these paragraph properties within the paragraph element. Here is the entire recursive transform that flattens paragraphs. If you're not familiar with pure functional recursive transforms you can find out more about them here. I wrote a blog post about them quite some time ago. I also have the intention of recording a number of screencasts that explain exactly how to write recursive pure functional transforms. Now that we know about flattening paragraphs, we can examine the algorithm to retrieve the bookmark text. To call this method, you pass an open word processing document. You also pass the name of a bookmark in this method that takes the word processing document and the bookmark. First thing it does is it validates that 
such a bookmark exists. If the bookmark does exist, the first thing it does is it flattens all the paragraphs. It passes the root element of the X document for the main document part to flatten paragraphs transform and it has a new root element that contains flattened paragraphs. It then goes in and gets the start bookmark element and the end bookmark element. At this point in time, for almost all situations, the start bookmark element and end bookmark element will be at the same level. Now, I believe it is possible, and I believe it's valid OpenXML word processing ML markup to have the start element start, for instance, before the row in a table, and the end element end in the middle of some paragraph that is below the table. Or the end element could end after another row in another table. And this code doesn't attempt to handle those situations. So if you are writing code that needs to watch out for those situations, then you'll need to either handle those situations or you'll need to handle this error in an appropriate fashion. Now that we have found the start bookmark element and the end bookmark element, it then becomes pretty trivial to figure out what the elements are between the bookmarks. We can do that by calling elements after self on the start bookmark element and using the take while operator taking elements until we reach the end bookmark element. Once we have the elements between the bookmarks, then it's pretty easy to do a projection of all of those elements. What we project is that if the element is a run, then we concatenate all of the text of the run into a single string. If the element is that paragraph element, which we know will not contain any children run elements and it won't contain any text, then we return environment.newline. And if it's anything else, we just return an empty string. And then we concatenate all of those strings together and make a single string out of those and return them. Uh, one key point about this code is that this code uses some pieces in the Power Tools for OpenXML utility modules. The string concatenate method, that's in ptutil.cs. That is the only method in those utility modules that we're using in this code. However, in the next screencast, when I show how to replace the text of a bookmark, we're going to be using quite a few other utility methods from those modules. So let's run this example and run it on all of those examples that I examined earlier in the screencast. In test 01, that was a simple example. The bookmark started and ended in the same paragraph, and we can see that it got the text is A. The second example, the bookmark started before the first paragraph and ended in the middle of the second paragraph. And we can see that the text retrieved was the text of the first paragraph plus an environment.newline followed by the text of the second paragraph. Well, that's all I'm going to cover in this screencast. In the next one, I'm going to discuss replacing text.